Here we go. Um, but yeah, I heard about the ninja movement, which so apparently it was it's an all it's, it's a strictly female thing. Yes. At least when I was when I was told about it, and I was like, that seems so cool, and it doesn't seem like a name that like a, a, a normal like a female would come up with. Like Soph would never come up with. She would just call it like you know the wine run, mm. which is still a cool name, but like. Mm-hmm. When I keep thinking like ninja, I'm like, yeah, ninjas, fucking hoods and knives and all that other shit. I think it's because um, the idea is they're supposed to hide it in their house without them knowing. Oh, it's a oh, brilliant that makes it even name. Even less creepy. Yeah, yeah. I guess. that's why it's called but, but, ninja because you're supposed to ninja your way into their house and leave it for them when they're sleeping. Sure. And then what you do is you take a Polaroid of them sleeping and then you leave mm-hmm. it in the basket to say. <laughs> I was here while you were sleeping. Super special. Make sure you include uh, <laughs> bring your Polaroid camera and just snap a quick shot of them in bed and leave it in the basket. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, then the next day, I the, I saw a notice and so fast. And she's like, "Have you heard of this ninja thing?" I'm like, "I literally just heard it yesterday." She's like, "Oh, the cops are sending out warnings." I was like, "All right, nothing is sacred anymore, I guess." No. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast. I'm not going to say it. I told myself I wouldn't say it this time. I'm your host, G, and with me is Vass and Anthony. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing post-birthdays? I've been getting dicked down with uh, university, so that's how it's been going for me. I got a midterm, a quiz, and a homework assignment due next week. Oh, that's not fun at all. So, yeah, that's me. Vass? Uh, Pretty quiet, just on the working front here and... Carrying on with that, catching some sun, which is nice. Working outdoors is very good these days. Mm-hmm. Especially oh, getting yeah. that uh, the vitamin D. I've been listening to a lot of um, people talking about how you know they're they're giving all this advice on how to social distance and not give people the virus and stuff. Yeah. Very few information on how to help yourself boost your immune system in the event that you are vulnerable. And yep. vitamin D is far and away the best thing i think zinc was on there as well and to a lesser extent vitamin c mm-hmm. but um vitamin d comes from the sun which is ironically during a time when we're supposed to be inside and away from the sun in in a way right like you obviously you can go outside on your own but anyway so that's good because vitamin d is super important i'm actually going to be picking up some vitamin d like pills mm-hmm. so um just to take those and make sure um, I've been fortunate enough with a good immune system. Like I haven't had the flu in I don't know how long. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been years. And the closest thing I got was my doctor said I might have gotten strep throat in 2014. Oh, but I didn't do anything about it. I was just I don't think cold. you really do. I think you just kind of like get over strep throat like, or strep throat. I don't think you, there's anything to really yeah. fix it. Well, and, and I didn't do anything either. Like, I didn't know. I, I just was like, oh, man. Because we I was in Toronto, and I came back, and it had rained in Toronto our last day. But it rained halfway when we were outside. So the rain there, plus the humidity, it's really cold. So my whole mm-hmm. body felt cold for a while. So I wasn't feeling great, but it didn't stop me from going to work. It didn't stop me from doing the stuff that I normally would do. And so I just powered through like I've been used to just powering through. So I think I'm, when, when I consider the history of me being sick, I think I'm fortunate in the fact that I am, I've got a good immune system considering my diet sucks and mm. I used to exercise a lot more. But anyways, so long story short, good for you, Vass, for being outside and getting vitamin D. Well, <laughs> um, Anthony, you wanted to talk about the ninja thing, which we kind of started on, uh, and then you had something on your end. Uh, yeah, so for the looks, I was invited by a friend, Nico, to this Regina wine I think it's called like whiskey ninja or something because you know it's more manly and macho sure and I'm not partaking in it yeah whiskey's ninja that's I'm looking at the page right now I'm not gonna partake in it just because I do not want to give out my address to a bunch of random people like I think it's a mm-hmm. fun trend I'm not bashing the trend saying it's you know stupid but it's just not something I want to do I, I haven't looked at the page though and honestly like the packages that do get left out are super nice super like they're full of you know, candies, beers, whiskeys, all this like super expensive, high grade shit, which is actually really impressive. But I just find it funny because uh, one of the admins, I think, posted a notice. Uh, he didn't post the article in question. I don't think there was an article, but he said his wife in the wine ninja group uh, 
there was some drama going on there because someone dropped off a package that had edibles in it. And apparently they weren't marked as edibles. So uh, the parents gave this candy from a random stranger to their <laughs> young children. And, you know, lo and behold, the candy was not good for the children. I don't know. I don't think there's anything like, I don't think anything bad can happen to it. They were just super high, I guess. But apparently the cops were called and like shit had to, you know, get fixed. But I assume the ninja didn't, you know, assume that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And drop off the edibles for a young child to eat. But I just found it really that, funny. That's fantastic. That's actually super mm-hmm. funny, especially because like realistically, it's it's harm. Like it's, it's it was an innocent thing. I I mean, unless they came out that the person did it maliciously, but like, it seems like one of those things that would happen where, you know, it's adult to adult and you're like, Oh, I'm going to put this in cause it's fun. And then the kid gets in it. And then all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, damn, what are we going to do? And you know, then you've got to, you know, deal with the kids that are high as fuck. I've never done it at bulls, but I heard they take you out. Hmm. They are, they are, they are I just hardcore. Imagine a kid doing it. Like a exactly. young child. I hope that child ate. You know, before uh, before eating that candy, and I hope he only had one, because I also haven't done any edibles. But I like from stories I've been told from other people, it's they're fucking intense. So for that being your first exposure, I can imagine it'd be a pretty rough ride. Oh yeah, yeah, um, big time. Actually, it was funny when you mentioned that you got signed on to like a group. There's a couple of groups that keep like that I've been invited to. And I'm, I'm really a dick about it because well, not a dick about it. I just don't sign up. And so I've got a lot of notifications on Facebook because I try to stay away from Facebook because it drives me up the fucking wall. Um, mostly because of how like both sides of every argument are just so stupid. And I'm just like, Oh, I'm going to stay away from a lot of you once this thing is cleared up like for, for a while. Yeah. So, but you know, my rugby guys had invited me to one and it's like all across the world and they post videos of them chugging beers and it's awesome. I just haven't played rugby in so long. So I feel like a poser just showing up and be like, Oh, Hey, even though I was invited by the guys that I still talk to on a semi-regular basis, but like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I just don't feel like you're joining any of these clubs and it's not like I want to be invited. I just, but then I'm thinking, I'm like, am I be a dick? Like, am I a dick for not like, accepting the invitation i don't think so because for me Mm. i've gotten invited to lots of people's pages or whatever and if it's people i know and like it's their side hustle or their hobby like i'll like it just to support them but a lot of time randos or people i just don't really talk to very well or you know someone who doesn't example support the podcast or you know support like in the past entertain facts ask Mm. me to like you know support their thing it's kind of like well not to be that kind of dick but if I'm not interested in your page and you haven't really supported me, I'm not going to go out of my way to, you know, have my feed flooded with random BS that you're posting. For sure. That's true. Vass, have you been invited to stuff? Uh, no, actually pretty good. Left flying under the radar. But like, I mean, if you know the group of people, like, I mean, it doesn't hurt to just be a fly on the wall as it is. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's good to be the one to reach out first. So you could play it both ways, right? You'd be like, Oh, I don't really like in your instance, you say with the rugby crew, it's like, Oh, I haven't played rugby in a very long time, but they wanted you in there and invited you. So like, Oh, I don't play anymore, but cheers to you guys kind of thing. You know, you could play it like that too. But yeah, mm-hmm. myself personally, yeah, not too many Facebook groups or anything like that. So have you guys been trying to limit your social media? I know with, uh, with, like the posting of the facts and and stuff, it's a little bit harder for you, Anthony. But like, I know for myself, after talking to uh, Arturo, who actually messaged me a couple days ago, mm-hmm. um, which by the way, stay tuned because he's either recording music or recording streaming or something because he was asking me about microphones and I'm super stoked. So I'm, nice. I'm, I'm super excited to see what Arturo decides to do. And um, yeah, I, I know that when he gets started, like... Uh, I, I think he's leaning towards music because his handle was Arturo Music Man. But anyways, <laughs> he came in uh, just to say a quick hi, which was awesome to talk to him. And then he's like, yeah, I'm dipping out again because, you know, it's just too much. Are mm-hmm. you guys doing that? Because I'm finking I'm doing that. Uh, not really. Like quarantine is kind of one of those things for me where I don't have a job. I have class now, but like up until, you know, the past what we started in March. So like there was two months of quarantine where I wasn't really doing anything because class I had, you know, one class that was 45 minutes a day. I really had nothing else to do except social media. 
I remember last year I was just in one of those, you know, negative mind spaces. So I decided to, uh, I don't think, oh, I don't think, Inst- or I think Instagram, cause that was, I think the time after entertain facts was deleted. So I kind of, you know, just deleted those for a couple days. And I just, even to this day, I still don't really check my phone that regularly. So if someone texts me, like, I know G you've noticed this a lot because you will text me something and I'll see it. Uh, but I won't respond right away cause I'm just not on my phone. And then I'll like, six hours pass i'm like oh shit g texted me something and he was a question so now i feel like a dick because he probably needed an answer and he would have you know wanted it soon not six hours later but i just try not to be dependent on my phone as most people my age are and sometimes i super am and sometimes i'm good enough where i can you know coexist without it yeah i hear you bass um, I like, I mean, I'm on there. I'll look at some funny shit and I don't really pay attention to all the crazy political noise or any what have you. I just scroll past it, find the funny stuff, get lost in it a little bit. But eh, other than that, it's not like it affects me that much. I am on there. Not like I'm trying to stay away from it, like making yeah. a point to I just, you know what? I'm bored. I'm going to go on there, check something out. And then if there's nothing. Okay. Shut it down. Whatever. Uh, I'll stick One to thing. IG, oh, but I, I will stay away from Facebook more. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Anthony, go ahead. So one thing I want to add, uh, this you guys might be able to relate to this problem on Facebook, but it's, I hate those people because on Snapchat, it's a big issue where some people will post on their public story, don't Snapchat me, like don't message me, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like basically leave me alone. Like I'm not going to be on Snapchat. I'm going off Snapchat. I'm deleting whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, and then whether that's I've, I know that's a Facebook is big for that too. Like I'm deleting Facebook, and they make a big post about it and reasons why. And I just don't give a fuck because a you're not the Messiah. No one is following you, you know, with a needle and thread. And if they notice, oh, X person hasn't posted in twenty minutes. Holy shit, what are they up to? Like no one cares. If you don't want to go on social media, go off social media. If you want a break from social media, take a break from like Arturo, for example. The man went fucking dark. He didn't make 20 posts leading up to him deleting his page or not, but you know, taking his page down for a short time. He just took a break and didn't need to announce it to the world. And I, it's one of my biggest pet peeves is when people make a big deal of them leaving social media or, you know, big deal of not to message me because I just find it so stupid that people think that they're really this, you know, there's, there's not many people invested in your lives. No one really cares. Take a break from social media, do whatever you need to do. Yeah. That's it. For that's my the uh, false <laughs> sense of inf- no. That's a good. That's a decent point though, because it's a, it shows to the, it. It always speaks to, and I think we talked about this before. But the false sense of importance you feel you have because you have this machine that's able to send your message across, and mm-hmm. you feel like you're the only one that has this ability, and so you create this false sense of importance in your mind, and um, you think that people are following you when they're actually not, right? Mm-hmm. And Even for us here, I know for a while, like I kept stressing about getting timelines out and videos out and everything like that. And I'm like, we, especially a couple of years ago, I'm like, we barely have anybody that could like, it wouldn't matter to them if we showed up tomorrow or not. Mm -hmm. Once that clicked in, oh man, this Mm -hmm. is way better. Now it's just like, you know, I put two reviews out in a week, for instance. And then I had, I did that fax review thing, which was, which did okay. And then I'll like, we'll keep tweaking it and stuff. And now I'm like, well, I don't need to rush to get another one out. I'll just keep working on it, tweaking it. Uh, the the three of us collaborate and figure the shit out and slowly work our way up, right? But <laughs> I used to put such importance because I, in my mind, I think I've thought more people were more were waiting for things to happen for us, even though it's like, no, that's just in my mind. And same with the people on Facebook that that will then post their big, I don't normally do this and uh, I don't, I don't do big posts like this, but, and then write eight paragraphs expecting people to read it. Like scroll to the bottom. Are you leaving? Okay. Bye. Hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't go on uh, social media to read fucking essays. You know, that's what I do in university. I don't, in my free time, I don't enjoy, Oh, look, I got to read Johnny's five page fucking paragraph double spaced as to why he hates coronavirus i get it we all do oh, no you're not special no one gives a shit yeah well and and mostly like the way that for me i dislike short-sightedness and i see a lot of that because people defend their position so hardcore and i know i've done it in the past and it's one of those things that i am working on which makes me hypersensitive to when i see it happening um so people that are just 
and what was it? Someone was saying something about Elon Musk, and they're like, yeah, get all the rich people the fuck out of here. I'm like, you idiot. Like, why? And then I, Tino posted that thing yesterday where it's like, imagine being Bill Gates and opening up a system that you literally built with your team. You're the reason why we have the things that we have right now. And watch people shitting on you after you spent most of your money on drugs to help people. Like on, on med- medicine and stuff mm-hmm. overseas to help people. And you have ignorant fucks that just hate capitalism, quote unquote, even though they don't know what that means, just to hate it. Uh, using the technology that he developed and that it became accessible and small and compact because of the rich people that bought it. Like it's stuff like that that's that really drives me up the wall. But what I've been doing is I will, and I've been lucky because I, I haven't accidentally sent anything, but I will write out a response mm. and then I'll delete it. Or, uh, or I'll go into my note, the notes on my phone, write out the response I was going to do, like live with it for about 30 seconds and then I'll delete it, but I don't send it to anybody. And you like a dream journal or something. Yeah, but I also don't need it to exist. Journal. Yeah. But I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I, I will take the time to actually write out what response I would have. Then I would think about what response could come back and how I can defend it. And mm-hmm. then I realize, is this actually worth it? Nine times out of 10, it's not even worth sending out. And that's why I always, almost always, and by almost always, I think so far I've always deleted the post that I was going to write, regardless on if it was a comment on someone's page or just in general, I was going to put something out. It just seems to be getting just as bad as it was before this shit happened. Well, the biggest thing like I that you mentioned and Tino also mentioned in his post Another big pet peeve of mine during quarantine is donation shaming. So there are people, oh, yeah. uh, I think it was, who's Amazon CEO? Jeff Bezos. Jeff Jeff Bezos, I think. Jeff Bezos, Bezos. Jeff Bezos donated X amount of money. And, you know, compared to the billions of dollars he has, it wasn't a large percentage of his overall sum of wealth. Lots of people online go on saying, well, you know, for him to donate that much money is the equivalent of me donating 30 cents. And I saw that and I think to myself, okay, but first of all, 30 cents and say $200 million, it doesn't matter. 200 million is 200 million. Doesn't, it shouldn't matter if he has X billion dollars. Why would you expect him to donate all of his you know, money to a cause? Like, it'd be great if he did, but you yeah. know, at the end of the day, money is a real thing. And if say, you know, if that, if I had a, as much money as Jeff Bezos, I'd love to donate. I wouldn't donate, you know. 50% of all the money I have because that's just a bad decision. But still, you know, I just hate yeah. seeing people bash other people for trying to do good or just even maybe if they have ulterior motives, they're still donating a large sum of money for a good cause. So for them to bash them constantly, it's kind of like, well, what do you want from them? And it's easy to say that when you're sitting at home and you can just think that they can do like they can just easily fix that. They don't know what that 50% would mean to a guy like him, right? Like, if someone were to say, give me 50% of your income, regardless of what was coming in, that would be like me taking in consideration what I would have to give up. And some of it might be, you know, not as important, but it's like, okay, well, if I give 50% of this, there's a large number of, let's say money I uh, donate to our church or money I, you know, go to buy things for so for groceries or whatever, you still have to think about it. So for a guy like that, who's got, not only is he making a lot of money, But he's got a lot of things, like he's got a lot of money invested in stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's this big machine that works. But what most times that I'm finding with people that are complaining about rich people, they don't understand the machine that's working and they don't understand all the the cogs on that or that, let's say, the, the stokes in the wheel. You know, they just look at the one thing that, oh, this person's got this amount of money. Well, what has that money What has that person done with that money? And more importantly, you say that now, but if you had that money, what would your response be to someone that's telling you, especially if you worked for it and you earned it, Mm -hmm. and you employed millions of people across the world, okay? What would your response be if someone were demanding you on Facebook, even though you're not even paying attention to it, but demanding you to give up your money? And, And I think that's where most people that talk like that 
Mm -hmm. really lose it in the long run because they do not consider that fact. They don't consider, what if I was that rich, would I do it? Because it's easy to say that. It's easy to say, oh, I would give all my money. No, you wouldn't. You hypocrite. Not a chance. Well, that's yeah, just that's the true. issue, man. Social media gives idiots a platform to say what they want. And usually it goes, uh, what do you call it? Like they don't have, con- yeah, there's no consequences for the stupidity they say because you can just hide behind a screen. Yep. Yeah. Vaz, you've been quiet. I don't know if you had any uh, thoughts on this. Uh, no, nothing really to input. I, I agree with you on that. It just, it's a little much with these people. And like you said, it's their platform and I just choose to ignore it and whatever. It's like, okay, another dumb idiot. All right. Carry on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's get into it because we're 20 minutes in and we got some shit to talk about. Uh, big, 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 unfortunate news. Jerry Stiller oh, yeah. passes away. Ben Stiller's oh. father. Mr. Costanza himself uh, passes away. He's one That's... of those staples in Hollywood. It's like, but the, like 91, good for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Festivus like will never be the same. <laughs> yes. Uh, I know me and my roommate in Calgary, we used to celebrate Festivus. I think you've asked, you were there one year. When uh, you guys came to pick me up. I think so, yeah. Yeah, we had we had the Festivus poll. We were doing the airing of grievances, the whole deal, uh, and it's perfect timing. As terrible as that sounds, but Anthony's finally starting to watch Seinfeld, so you know Mr. Costanza. Mm-hmm. I don't think, as to where I am yet, I've seen him because I'm only halfway through season three. I've been co binging Community and Seinfeld. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, it's really funny though because my parents now they've obviously heard me watching Seinfeld just because I watch it on my computer, TV, wherever. And now it's another like medium for them to talk to me about how much they love Seinfeld and they come up with all these like jokes and references, uh, kind of uncomfortable. My dad was talking about how like his favorite episode was the masturbation bet. Uh, oh my god, four. the bet! It's it's or, literally just bet. called the bet. It yeah. is. I think that episode won them the Emmy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he was just telling me how Kramer, you know, went and they all put their money down, and then like <laughs> ten seconds later, he takes his money off, saying he can't do it. I'm out. Yeah. No, he paid. He I'm paid out. out. He paid out. I'm yeah, out. He dropped his money on the table and he's like, I'm out. Like literally uh, didn't make it a uh, day. That was so good. But yeah, so far the series is just really funny. Like I posted one of my favorite jokes on the F words Instagram page where uh, Newman calls Kramer in the middle of the night saying he's going to jump. And he says, yeah, tell- wave when you pass the window. And he actually yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's so good. I'm Those are one to of finish the- it up. Yeah, dude, it's a it, it's one of those you'll you'll notice so much. You'll also notice that like mine, Nick's, Bass's, a good chunk of us, our conversations have a lot of Seinfeld in them. Like oh, yeah. the just the references and stuff and the the comments that we use and like a good chunk of it is is that. It's pretty uh it's pretty awesome. And now you're a part of it too. It's like you're inducted into the uh into the crew. Well, now I finally um, have, you know, a respected taste for your Kramer poster in the basement. Oh, go. yeah, exactly. Have you seen that episode yet? I don't think so. Okay, when you get to that, though, you'll you'll know exactly Is the painting like about. an actual reference? Oh, yeah. Like, is there it, a painting it, in the show? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an actual thing that they did in the show where he got painted. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've not That's seen also it a really good episode. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Jerry Stiller, that was a, I don't know, that was one of the ones that I was like, holy shit, like, but... Again, good for him for 91. Like, that's crazy. Um, we should all be so lucky. This is less of a news thing for all of us, but more for me. Run the Jewels 4 is coming out, and I'm super excited about it. I think it's like June 5th. And also, Josh Homme, the frontman for Queens of the Stone Age, is on track 11. So one of my favorite duos with one of my favorite rock frontmen on a track together I'm so stoked for that nice. album. I'm and and Ooh La La was one that was released recently, and it's dope as hell. Um, vast after last week, I noticed two things that were shattered glass moments. Yeah, I've been noticing this recently, also with myself, and you guys will notice this too. People's eyes are not the same size. Like one eye always closes or is smaller than the other, and mm-hmm. I've been noticing it way more. And I've noticed it for myself because I look at photos. I'm like, oh, my eyes are not, they don't close at the same rate. Like one closes more than the other. And then the other one is people's teeth, specifically in shows 
because I'm watch I'm still watching Lost. They're way too perfect for you know a location where they probably don't have the best dental hygiene. Mm-hmm. Walking so Dead is another big things. example of that. Yeah, yeah. Those things I was noticing. Most and most I, shows I don't thinking. accurately portray that part. Well, for and, like, and at well, the Austin same time, Austin Powers did exactly. Oh, that's different. That was more of a parody i guess you can say or it's still jokes but they addressed it but they they addressed it at the end when they showed how good his teeth were and i was like that like still to this day i'm like that's such a great bit that they did oh yeah um yeah so anyways i noticed those two things uh did you guys see the snowpiercer trailer i have not okay so snowpiercer it it is happening on netflix okay just released today is that the parasite director's thing or is that something else yes yes that's the one that's my favorite movie of his. Um, yeah, right, that's true. So, so far, <laughs> Snowpiercer is my favorite movie of his. I th- it's a, such, such a brilliant movie. And the trailer for the show looked really, really good. Oh, there's a show now. Okay. That's what it is. It, it was a trailer yeah. for the show. Uh, so, that dropped today, and it looked really good. And right. if you guys haven't seen Snowpiercer, I know I mentioned on the show before, take a look at it. Is it like a horror film or a thriller? Like, what is? Like, don't go into too much detail because I do want to watch it. But just to like yeah. get an idea, is it a thriller or what is it? Mm, the world freezes over, mm-hmm. and there's a train called the Snowpiercer that mm-hmm. is the only, the last living, like the, it, it inhabits the last living humans, and it just circles the world oh. over <laughs> and over again. And from the back of the train is where the the poor people are. Front of the train are the rich people allegory for you know disparity in class systems and all that stuff and there's how the people in the back people in the front and how mm-hmm. snowpiercer actually operates and all that so it's kind of like if mad max was on a train in a way okay i guess maybe not the best idea analogy but it's one of those things so i would say it's more dystopian um science fiction type okay. of thing very good though like exceptional movie that people do not give enough credit because um, my coworker always yeah. like he was saying Snowpiercer is another one of his favorite ones, but and it's on Netflix, so I honestly really have no issue. Like I'm gonna watch it probably sometime this week after I finish all my crap up. But yeah, nice. And you'll probably notice people whoever are watching this on YouTube that we got Sleeping Dogs. I was I started I downloaded it two weeks ago, and I haven't heard a word of it. I've played this game four times. Every time I think about this game, I've actually went and bought it at EB Games twice. Because I'd buy it, I'd play it, I'd finish it, I'd give it back. And then this time, I actually downloaded the definitive version on PS4. Oh. And the reason I bring it up is because in the past two days, I've seen two brand new videos from prominent YouTube streamers read, like discovering this game and playing it. Hmm. And it just so happens that that's the footage that we have for this week's show. And I'm like having a blast playing it. Anthony, if you haven't downloaded it, I think it's like five bucks on PS4. It's got so much content it is one of the most underrated um open world games vast you were over yesterday and you saw me play it yeah it looked pretty sweet uh the world is so well to put together the fighting in it is some of the best in a game i've seen it's not too over the top it's a little it's more down to earth than some of the crazy yakuza stuff that i've seen which is still dope as fuck but just way more right way more anime i'll put it that way Mm -hmm. and the story is exceptional um so anyways it just it was just so super weird that two weeks ago i downloaded this thing and then two days ago it's just like all these videos coming out talking about it speaking of which nice. tony hawk remastered mm. september 4th yes. tony yes. hawk one and two. Oh, so good i can't wait I, just when they I started was, playing the soundtrack i was very excited <laughs> oh man totally never... it's so good into skate like i think i played skate three a bit at friend's house and stuff like that but i was just really never into skateboarding but even that's a pretty i understand like the hype of this announcement for lots of people because people are to this day or even like before they announced the remaster they've been asking for skate three remastered or skate four so this is it's kind of weird how they didn't do skate three remastered i wonder why see the thing is skate is different tony hawk the original There is whether you this is the original Tony Hawk games that came out for the N64, okay? Yeah. There is I'm I'm pretty sure yeah, it was N64. There is very few people on this planet that would have had a PS4 and did not play Tony Hawk's Pro, Pro Skater. It is I mean, one of N64? those games for a specific and I think it was N64, right? Yeah, you said PS4. <laughs> Sorry, N64. Yeah. 
Um, but but the remaster is coming out for the PS4. So Tony yeah. Hawk oh, Pro Skater. Oh, I see. That was a stupid yeah. mistake on my part then. No, that's okay. Yeah. There's also PlayStation N64, but it's <laughs> one of those definitive moments in gaming history where like it was an exceptional game. Skaters and non-skaters played the shit out of it. And it was one of those games that got licensing for music. Yeah. And mm-hmm. a lot of these bands got discovered because of the game. Like for me, Goldfinger, like Superman Goldfinger is the best so- song in that game. Okay. Yeah. And if you look up that song, it's so awesome. But the fact that they're not just like putting a coat of paint on it, they're literally building it from the ground up with yeah. the, ex- and that's- the same map size is just unbelievable. I would say that's probably the, their best bet because, like, trying to, you, there's no way to bring it from what it had, what they have to this level without it being clunky and not working properly. So, the b- building it from the ground up for themselves, I think it'll be the best bet. And then it can be 4K, but we just want the same style of gameplay um, and all that kind of stuff. But it'll be just different to get used to the controls, I guess. <laughs> not having that yeah. directional pad on the right hand side, like the N64, the way it's set up, it's like perfect with the deep, with the, yeah, the directional pad on the right hand. So that'll be to do your tricks. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm just envisioning myself the... trying to do like a bend and an ollie and all that stuff. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's going to be very different on a different console for sure. Well, not necessarily because they'll just, the, I mean, it will, but they'll just have like the X as it, the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. um, the, the uh, ollie button right yeah, and so yeah, instead yeah. of skate that actually uses the joystick yeah. as you're like you pull it down and you lift it up this was like press a button and you make things happen mm-hmm. and it was all about getting the character and the character having their moves like rune glyphberg doing the christ air that is what mm-hmm. i'm looking forward to the most as soon as you go down that huge drop i forget which level that was yeah. and the music starts with ding, 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 and you just catapult in the air and you just do that christ air i'm pretty sure it's up down left and right and you hold it and yeah he just like rotates and you just rack up those points oh man mm-hmm. that trailer dropped i lost it literally yeah. lost it it'll be pretty pricey uh, too is that 70 bucks i think they said or yeah 60 70 dollars it'll be for both those games seriously i thought it was yeah. i heard it was 34 34 so. each thinking, maybe oh even then, they're gonna be selling it as like I believe yeah. a package or no one. Yeah, game. they're selling it as a package, so you're probably paying I'm thinking eighty-five 80. bucks. I'm thinking, I'm 80, thinking bucks. eighty. It's like, um, it's both games though. It's one and two, both yeah. unbelievable skating games. So that's also probably why. Like, so each one, if it's thirty-four or thirty-five bucks, then each one's like, oh, like you know, essentially twenty bucks each. Yeah. For for the package deal together, but again, yeah. they're they're putting it. They're starting from the ground up, and it's going I don't know. I'm so excited. This whole I don't know what it is about this last week. I think everyone just decided. I don't know if there was a, supposed to be like a a gaming convention this particular time of year, but mm-hmm. all the gaming news is out of this world. Well, I just oh, yeah. saw one before the show too. Uh, not like an exciting announcement, but whoever is making the next Arkham game, uh, I forget which company exactly it is, but they Rocksteady? tweeted out. It's not Rocksteady. Uh, it's. I think it's the one that did Origins, so Warner okay. Bros. is something. But they uh, tweeted out saying to patiently wait for the next update for the new Batman game. Oh, yes, that one's coming out for sure. Yep, big time. Um, the other stuff that came out, Mafia Trilogy is getting released. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be a full remaster like the Tony Hawk one is, but they are re-releasing those ones. That's also I think it's cool. supposed to be from what I, I saw. I just, okay. See. Yeah, two gate. Yeah, they were remastering the Mafia trilogy, and those games were very good too. I I, the I played the one, recent like, just one. Came it was out a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was okay, but the originals, like one and two, were very, very good. Yeah, very good. Um, the big one for me, two big ones for the world. One of them specifically, because I mentioned it on the on the show, is Ghost of Shushima. Because I think I've been saying it wrong, mm-hmm. and I listened to that. Uh, or I watched the state of play. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Yeah. And that game is coming out July 17th. That footage was, it was Wait, like, is that what that game was? Yeah, man. On the if, PS5. No, no. Different. Yep. Oh, no, PS4. No, no. July 17th, okay. PS4 is Ghost of Shusima. Shusima, sorry. This is a totally different what? game, Anthony. Yeah. 
What game are you talking about, Anthony? Like, talking about the one that game? was shown in the PS5 yeah, engine. what was in the PS5 one? Because that looks like okay. an Uncharted-style we'll, game. Let's talk about ridiculous. that. <laughs> yes, so that's the next one. We are yeah. we are 1,000% not getting into our main topic. We'll leave that again for next week. <laughs> um, but because this is this is actually like legitimately big news and because and, I can't stop talking about it with people. So mm-hmm. first, Ghost of, of Shushima. I, I'm pretty sure that's how we said it now because now it's yeah. got me all fucked up. You guys watch that footage? I did. I didn't watch it like start to finish. I just kind of jumped ahead a little bit. Like I saw a little bit of what how they were setting up the the character and what you can do and how to navigate. And then I jumped to some of the fight sequences and see how those played out. Okay, Anthony, it's 18 minutes. Okay, this is what I was expecting them to do for most of the gameplay for Microsoft. For, for Microsoft. So. Uh, it's it's so good. Hell, you can even put it in the background now and just kind of watch yeah, it while we're doing. talking. It is it is like if Breath of the Wild and Assassin's Creed had a baby, oh, and that baby was a samurai child. It is so beautiful. The gameplay is like the best versions of stuff we've already done. Essentially, like very familiar, but it's the good parts of the familiar. You know what I mean? Like they're pulling from stuff like Assassin's Creed, God of War, um, Breath of the Wild, um, you know, Red Dead a little bit here and there. It's, it, I don't know. For, for uh, a, I mean, the game's coming out soon, but man, I didn't even expect that much. Hmm. Yep. It's It looked good. Hey, Vass? From what I saw, it looked really good. Uh, and that's the thing. Like the, the first little bit, like I said, it kind of like, by the time he sets up the character, it took a little bit for that. It was a little slow for me in the start, but it was interesting how they set that up. And then once I jumped to like see some of the fight sequences and stuff like that, and I said the mechanics, like just like you said, it has a very Assassin's Creed feel to it. Um, I never played Breath of the Wild, but I think that I think that uh, attests more to the environment and how vibrant it is, yes. and you know, using the wind literally. <laughs> to so yeah, which was I thought was really cool. So instead of having a HUD display. Mm-hmm. It's literally you go discover things using the wind. Like the wind will actually blow a certain way to to draw you towards it. Um, they have the smokes, the the smoke points kind of thing coming out of camps, yep. like yep. similar to Red Dead. Mm-hmm. You have two types of play, which you can do as like just regular samurai Jin. That's your character's name, mm-hmm. or the ghost version, which is the more Assassin's Creed stealthy style. So can um, you like transform into the ghost? Is that what? No, this is, I. Or? The ghost looks to me like your alternate. Like it's kind of like Bruce Wayne and Batman type of thing. Okay. Um, where oh, okay. Uh, my guess is something tragic happens and he becomes the ghost of Shushima, and so it it allows you to do different play styles. Mm-hmm. In, now, in the demo, I don't know if they skipped ahead to a point where, like, okay, at one point you're samurai, but or and the other point you're ghost, but it seemed like those are interchangeable, hmm. um, which I thought was super awesome. The collectible system looks good. Like, animals will actually draw you into stuff. Um, the fighting style looked great. They have a, a classic samurai movie mode, which is black and white. Mm-hmm. That's actually pretty fun. Unbelievable, and you can toggle that. I'm like, all I could think of is the fight of with Jet Li and Donnie Yen in Hero. I don't know if you guys ever seen Hero before. It is one of my favorite movies. It is an exceptional samurai film. It is such an epic movie, and it is stunning as all hell. And there is one fight scene with Jet Li and Donnie Yen, and they, it is black and white. And holy fuck, like I. I just picturing it right now gives me goosebumps. It is exceptional. And so they're doing all the right things in this game. Like picking flowers to dye your clothes, for instance, is a very small detail, but I think it's really cool, like organic feel to it. The photo mode looks great where you can add music on to it. Man, just, yeah, good for like, them. I'm, I I'm watching this as like, that's all my weird yeah. moans and groans. But like yeah. these kills are fucking nice and gruesome. Like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. And the, and the fighting looks like, it's one of those things where, yeah, if you do shoot somebody in the head, they will die. They're not mm-hmm. going to, like, come back, which I think is the th- one thing they're looking at with Valhalla. Like, there's been some new Assassin's Creed Valhalla news, except, mm-hmm. no, like, the gameplay is coming soon, my guess is, in, like, the next month or so. Yeah. But they're also interact Like, they, they brought back the insta-kill with the hidden blade, but they have yep. characters with with weak points. So just like they showed in the trailer where you stabbed the guy in the knee, it was a small weak point in his armor, but it didn't kill him. And so it looks like they're really focusing, and that might be the new combat style going forward, is 
more weak points that require a little bit more skill to get to and it's not just a one shot kill but mm -hmm. or it just if you sh if you hit them in the chest when they have armor on they don't die right away it will require some ability to get there yeah that's fair but yeah, I don't know, man. Are you excited? like? I don't know. Like, this has been one. I remember when you did the Friendship Breakers episode. Like, ever mm -hmm. since that one, Anthony, is that's when like they first released some footage of this. Yeah, game, I saw it in I, 2018. Yeah, so that's when I've been getting like super excited for it. Like, I'm not gonna lie. After seeing the PS5 tech demo at the start, like I thought it had nice visuals, but it wasn't anything that impressive. But like, this just looks like a fun game and just like really nice, like. Because obviously PS5 aside, if I didn't see that, it would be super impressive. But, you know, mm -hmm. after having, like, that in my head, it's kind of like eating Gordon Ramsay's steak and then going to, like, McDonald's and having a burger. It just doesn't compare. But, fuck yeah. me, this looks like a fun... Is there a release date yet? Or did it get pushed back? July 17th. Oh, shit. Nope. That's quick. It's coming Ooh. up, man. Yeah. Like, That's why I was asking you about pre-orders, because I haven't pre-ordered it yet. Because I was, um, was going to pre-order it in March, and then we got shut down, and everything got closed, mm -hmm. so... And this is a no, PS5 ex or PS4 exclusive, right? Oh, yeah. That is tough. You hate to see that. I love <laughs> to Sorry, see Sorry, Bass. Why? Bass has a PS4. Yeah, but he's an Xbox main, so you can still make fun of him. I'm a hybrid, man. I go all three. Tribrid. Mm. Yeah. Do you have a Switch? NPC. No, I got a PC, though. Yeah, well, the weaker the weaker of the two. I do have an N64, <laughs> though. <laughs> oh. So beat that. Uh, that's well, true. You do have your Switch N64. can play N64 games. <laughs> Yeah, it's but it's same, not bro. the N64. Oh, because yeah. a better controller? Uh, controller, no, and you have to blow on the cartridge to make it work? Like, come on. It's no. true. You can let the cartridge that... and taste like shit. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. I recommend that. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to do that. Um, but now that you mentioned it, let's talk about that PS5 footage, which I like to say is the nine minutes that superseded the one hour that Xbox tried to do. Xbox Series X whole thing was a full hour or so, and Sony did more in nine minutes than they did in an hour. That was, it was disgusting. Oh it my was, god! Not only that, they that game is not a real game. They developed that, that game. Yeah, so they put together that game just for this demo. Okay, it yeah. had the the display, the actions to like move up and down, to, the interact, the voiceover for the character, everything. Mm -hmm. Like. Holy shit. You know, and, and this is me eating my words, because last week, if you recall, we were talking about like, oh, I don't know if next gen will actually be the graphics that we that we're expecting. Yeah, no. Fuck. We were very wrong. Yeah. Very wrong. It was like the fact that they mentioned that it was like in the tens of billions of triangles to make up those statues in that room. And they mm -hmm. love triangles. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. That was crazy. Like the also lighting dynamics. Like I posted a meme about uh, a clip from Silicon Valley where this guy talks about the power of the triangle and some guy commented PS5 is going to flop so hard and I'm just <laughs> sitting here thinking did we watch the same fucking like video because like just I know it's just a game in graphics but holy shit that is like compelling that's a compelling video like I do not yeah. need to see any more and I'm already leaning towards PS5. Yeah. Totally. I think Bass? that definitely falls it, well I think the greatest thing I heard from that is that any footage you see is all cinematic. So mm. like they can literally take pictures or movie clips and put them right into the game. And then that's what you're the environment you're playing on, which is massive because, you know, it's always yeah, sucks, the, like the, the level that they have. Yeah. MCU game, MCU game. MCU game. That'd be hype yeah. as fuck. All 22. Wait. All 22 what? Movies into one game. Oh. I'm sure they could do yeah, that campaign. Uh, but yeah, maybe. basically... Uh, all I know is that... Watch. Go, Vass. I was just saying how, like, now any cinematic trailer you see, you know the gameplay will look exactly the same. And that's kind of huge, I think. I mean, we've watched, like, the Assassin's Creed cinematics, for me, of what have been some of the best. But it's like, you always yep. know that you're not going to get that in the game, 100%. Right. So that'll be refreshing going forward, how they'll introduce that. Well, and, and it wasn't even just a walkthrough where they showed you like the, the, the triangles and like the billions of this and the thousands of that. But at the end of it, like you're the character in there, like the, the, the whole thing looked like it was an uncharted Tomb Raider hybrid. And I mm -hmm. cannot wait to play that game. It's like uncharted Tomb Raider and Horizon Zero Dawn 
had the most beautiful child and it's like I want this game. Whatever they show me right there, I want that game. I want that setting, that character, that whatever. Just give me exactly what you have. Yeah. Now, keep in mind, this is a very specialized trailer that they put together, which looks amazing. Not every game is going to be like this. And yeah. also, this may not very well be the first phase of PS5 because someone saying the PS5 is going to fail could mean that right out of the gate, Xbox might beat them, especially because of the technical issues we talked about. Well, Xbox may actually launch first. Like, I don't know if PS5 and Xbox are going to have a, you know, simultaneous launch just because Xbox does seem to be further along. They've already pro, like, they've already, uh, you know, shown their console. They've already done all this extra stuff that PS5 hasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, PS5's only, you know, shown a little bit, like a very little, but very, you know, exceptional piece of footage for games and their controller. And that's it. Xbox has shown the console. I believe some footage of the games on the console, correct? Uh, it, most of what they showed at the Xbox thing was just CGI trailers. Oh, so yeah, that's why I, I keep saying that they seem to have done way like Sony has done way more in the in the nine minutes or so that they had hmm. than Microsoft did in that full hour. Like the the amount of hype around just that nine minute clip is way more than anything after, like Microsoft did. Which is kind of like thinking, well, maybe you don't need to do so much. Just release something to give us a taste. But they didn't just give us a taste. They literally developed a section of what could possibly be a game in a brand new engine that that is fully functional. And then they showed it. And they ended it off with like a really cool video game moment where she's flying through these mm -hmm. ruins. Did yeah. anyone else think about how amazing Spider-Man 2 is going to look on the PS5? Like just that last scene, like mm -hmm. that gave me such, so like very heavy Spider-Man vibes. And I'm very excited because if Spider-Man 2 looks anything, even like a half of as good as that trailer did, it's going to be an insanely fun game. Yeah. PS well, Spider-Man yeah. for PS4 didn't even look that bad. Like it looked fine, but it looked, you know, we're kind of used to the graphics that that game had right now. Yeah, but it looked great though. Like the mm -hmm. the like the it, as far as a game goes, it was a beautiful game. Well, and yeah, like the cutscenes too. Like it looks like a fucking yeah. movie. And they weren't too far off to Vass's point about the AC trailers versus the gameplay. It wasn't that far off with the actual in-game footage. Mm -hmm. Like obviously, it was more cinematic. I'm not saying that it wasn't. Yeah. But I think I'm actually the game that I'm thinking about now is God of War because God of War on the PS4 is beautiful. Oh, yeah. But I can only imagine what it looks like with this because God of War is more of that earth toned, not as cartoon feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Oh man, the future is now. Should be good. I, I'm 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 eating my words from last week for sure. It's gonna be an exciting couple of months leading up to the next mm -hmm. launch of the next gens. Yeah, oh, yeah, and I'm buying a TV. I need to buy a new TV if that's the case. I've been holding off, but just I'm wait till the next Black one. Friday. Which is yeah, November. <laughs> I guess the last thing I would say is, are you guys going to get the very first PS5 that comes out or are you going to wait for phase two? I'm waiting phase two. Yeah. <laughs> well, right yeah. now, that's the plan. But just because I know you don't have any issues with your PS4, but most of the time, whenever a new console comes out, it's not rushed, but like they haven't fully tested it. And there's lots of people like they haven't tested all the bugs and what everything could happen. So lots of times, I think PS4 overheated a lot, and it still does. Uh, you know, Xbox 360 was the most notable one with the Red Rings of Death. That yeah, never man. really got fucking fixed, so it didn't matter. <laughs> but I'm just going to wait it out, see some reviews, and probably wait like two to three months afterwards, just so more games get on there and just everything's kind of set up. Yeah. Bass? Uh, I'm probably going to wait it out as well and see what's what, because... You know, uh, we were talking about this a bit. The, the mistake I made is I held on to my Xbox 360 for way too long. And now mm. it's worth nothing. It's garbage. So you get to a point where you can trade in your current console for the new gen. And that helps lower the cost and stuff like that. But it's always good to give it a little bit of a time. Let the first few flow out. Work out the kinks and uh, see if anything major comes about. And then you can jump on the train. And I mean... The, the problem is if you buy the first gen, then they'll just come out with the, a, a mid gen one. That's going to be that much better. And you just, it's a vicious cycle. That's the only thing I, I found with like the PS4s. They didn't necessarily uh, 
do the massive changes, but there were like some, you know, more sp- space, the slim versions and all that kind of stuff. And that might roll out mm-hmm. how many months or I don't know, maybe, maybe a year after who knows, but yeah. I am going to go the opposite and I will buy it. And mostly mm-hmm. only because the first PS4 I bought in 2014, when I bought it with black flag, mm-hmm. it lasted me up until, up until now, because then I get then Soph ended up buying me a PS4 Pro for our anniversary, and then I gave you Vass my PlayStation, mm-hmm. and it still worked. Like that yep. thing had not a single issue with it, and it was so beast. And I have never I've been fortunate enough to never have an issue with a console before, so I'm probably going to buy it because I don't want to wait to play AC Valhalla on mm-hmm. the second phase. I'm going to want to play it right away. That's so fair. I think I'm going to roll the dice, get the insurance kind of thing or the whatever. Like maybe the I think warranty. there's that guaranteed console deal just in case something happens. Warranty, whatever the fuck. And roll the dice. Hmm. But we'll see. It's time will tell. Time Hopefully will tell. by December. Because that's kind of when they're slated to come out. But I'm still not really buying it. That's going to come out by 2020. See, and that's the other thing, because then Assassin's Creed comes out in November, so I might have to fucking get it for both anyways. Well, PS5 will be backwards compatible, so you may as well, you, know, you should oh, just yeah. be able to pl- plop it in there and be good. Mm-hmm. But. They're doing that thing where if you do buy the PS4 version or whatever, then it will play on the PS5. What's that thing called? They were a, a bunch of games were doing that. that. <laughs> yeah, backwards compatible. No, 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 but they, 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 had a, they had a phrase, like they, they had a specific kind of salesy type of phrase that they use to describe that oh we are off like this game is going to be part of this feature whatever that allows you to have it for both or what I don't fucking know. the four to five yeah I, I, I forget what the phrase is but whatever as of next week i'm i think you said the ebs are opening up so i'm going to go start uh, yeah, dropping some coins 19th so in four days four days shout Perfect. out to the homie jesse oh yeah Tuesday. yeah Tuesday. Awesome. Yeah, so now I'm going to go and put some money down on some shit. For sure, I'm going to just flat out buy Ghost of Tsushima, just have it ready. Mm-hmm. And then, I think I have Cyberpunk already, like, half paid off or something. But... Mm-hmm. All right. Gentlemen, anything else? Not no, for me. that's it for me. That's it. That's all. All righty, all righty. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another week uh, on YouTube. I hope you guys are enjoying the video game footage that we're pumping out. And uh, we're going to be switching it up and, you know, different games every week. Just try to have something for you to watch. Plus, we're playing video games anyway, so it makes just oodles of sense. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're following the F word podcast on Facebook and Instagram and the lazy Canadian on Instagram. We are going to be putting out more videos as time goes on, working on that new fax style of video that's kind of connecting the instagram facts with youtube and keeping and blending the worlds more and more together so until then i am g i am anthony and i'm Vas, and we are out (laughs) 